We are right at the end of Teardown. They are literally tearing down Teardown in the background as we speak, but one of the people I did not have chance to speak to um, was the Pocket PD team. Now, if you've worked with power delivery at all, you will know that it can be quite frustrating because in many cases it is very set. You get a set voltage and a set current output depending on the kind of power source that you are using. However, Pocket PD will allow you to take a regular power brick. In fact, this is the same 100 watt power brick that I use for my stuff, but it will allow you to get really uh, high resolution voltage outputs and set current limits. So, um, where, what, well, let's start with what is Pocket PD and where did the idea come from? So uh, Pocket PD, you want me to hold it? Yeah, yeah, go yeah. right ahead. Yeah, yeah. So Pocket PD is, uh, it will stand for uh, power delivery in your pocket. Yeah. It's supposed to replace your bench power supply by using combining uh, uh, um, USB-C power delivery brick and, you know, some negotiation and clever tricks in, you know, inside the, the, the bag. Um, so how we started is, you know, same idea like you said. It kind of annoying because you know, I, I don't. I want to have some control of whatever input voltage is coming in. So I would develop this uh, first version. is called uh, Pico PD. It's a drop-in for um, Pi, Raspberry Pi Pico, mm -hmm. same footprint. And we test it. You know, it was our development product, and it worked. So from there, we start develop other um, trigger board. That uh, so this one here is just do voltage, and then we have version that also do uh, current control. Yeah. And then you know, when we have current and voltage, why don't we combine? both the unit together to create something, you know, that actually can handle both. Or at least you can see it. So, um, maybe a good point here would be to say, I've already seen this demonstration once, but we'll go through it once again. This is a, uh, a LiPo battery, well, uh, yeah, a, li a LiPo battery that um, requires a very specific uh, voltage and current to charge, and usually you would have to get a dedicated charger for it, but what we're about to see here is this being used to set the voltage and set the current from a regular power bank. So if you want to go through the steps, I can hold the mic for you so you can tell, uh, so you can use both hands. Yeah. You can describe what you're doing as we go. All right, I can do that. Um, we have a power bank, um, a brick here, and then let's plug it in. So if you closely, so that will be your boot screen, and after that, it will tell you what communication protocol this, uh, the charger is be able to provide. And then once you're in, you know, um, it's just a regular interface, very basic, you know, you can turn it to change voltage, and when you press it, you know, it can go finer to voltage control. So here right now, I'm requesting, let's say, uh, 14, we're getting 14.32 volt out of the brick. Um, I also can press this button, and then you see the small number down here? I can change it to set my current limit. So let's say if I want to charge this battery, let's set it to um, 1 volt, 1 m, 1.2 m for current limit. Now, we can plug in the banana jack and then we hook it up to the battery so our terminal voltage that we want to stop charging is as 14.32 uh, current limit is gonna be 1.2 amp right now the output is on but there is no current because the output is on right on, on this side which means the output is live but there is nothing going from the brick to the battery so if we press this button here you can see that it immediately go to constant current mode and uh, current is capped out uh, at 1.2, and then the voltage just drops. So if I do it again, you can see that voltage jump back up, voltage go back down. And Absolutely, and, and one other thing you mentioned as well is um, there is uh, protection inherently built into this, right? So yeah. if, if, if you were to do something silly like take both of those clips and then, uh, for example, just you know stick them onto one another. Yeah, we can do it right now. It immediately cuts out. <laughs> and if you unplug it and then you can press it again mm -hmm. to reset, now the circuit is back up online. And you can try it again. Mm -hmm. And also it has a, a oh, I touch it again. Mm -hmm. And also there's an ideal diode protection in here, mm -hmm. which is mean when you charge the battery, if the voltage of the negotiation is lower than the battery voltage, there would not be a backfeed current going to your charger. Sure, exactly, yeah. So it pretty much seems to tick every box. All of the frustrations we talked about at the very start of this interview for how PD can be used uh, practically, this sort of takes them away, right? Yeah, Yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I saw here there is um, there is a QR code for Tindy right here. I will uh, make sure that the Tindy link is in the link of this dis uh, the description of this video when it goes live on YouTube. Um, and uh, is, is the Tindy page the best place to find you? Uh, you can find me on tindyhackaday.io or Electrons. Uh, as of right now, this product is not launched on Tindy or any other platform just yet, because uh, that's one part of why we're here in Tindy, so we can have opportunity to talk to across uh, supply.
Absolutely, but uh, as I say so often on uh, my YouTube show when I'm talking about things on Crowd Supply and elsewhere, um, when this thing does go live, you can be sure that I will be coming back to talk about it again to let you know when you can get your hands on one. Um, but yes, Pocket PD is taking the frustration away from using uh, power delivery, and uh, I just think it's genuinely a really cool device. I'm glad that I caught you guys before this whole event was torn down around us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. You.